Hey everyone, thanks for watching Bridge Boat's Brightest Lights, and today in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert a 2D layout in X-Lights to 3D. So, let's get right into the video. So the topics I'm going to cover in this video is what is 3D, why you should use 3D, and maybe you shouldn't use 3D, and how to convert a 2D layout into 3D. Now if you're new to RGB pixels and don't know how they work, then I recommend you watch this video right here because it'll take you through the basics on how to use RGB pixels and this video won't make sense if you don't know a lot about it. And if you don't know what 2D or 3D layout is, it's basically how you can view your lights in X lights when you're programming them. If you don't know what X lights is, then watch this video right here. It is almost three hours long, but it goes through the entire setup on X lights. It is a little bit old, a year and a half old probably, but it's still, most of the settings are still the same, so it should be perfectly fine. And very quickly, if you don't want to watch that video, then I'll just explain what 2D and 3D is. When you're programming your lights in X lights, you could see what your lights look like. You could take a picture of your house, put it in X lights, and then it shows you what the lights would look like. The default layout is 2D, so you can see all of your lights in 2D and you can kind of move them around a little bit. And that works perfectly fine in some case scenarios. But if you have a lot of props that are behind each other and maybe on the corner of a street, you might want to use 3D. 3D will allow you to see any viewpoint of your house, such as a bird's eye view, or what it would look like if you're from a drone, what it would look like if you're coming from different angles on your road. Even what it would look like from underground. So when you're moving around your props in X lights in 2D, you have an X and a Y coordinate. And that tells where the props can go. So you can move it side to side, up and down, adjust it how you want. You can make it bigger and smaller. But when you move to 3D, then you have a Z coordinate. So you have your X, you have your Y, and then you also have your Z, which is back and forth. So that will allow you to move your props closer to your house or farther away from your house. That way when you're moving to different viewpoints, it looks like it's in the correct spot. Now setting up your layout in 3D is a little bit harder than 2D and it can get really confusing but once you set it up for one year it will be easy to add more lights as long as you don't move into a new house or have anything change on your house. There's an easy step and a hard step to set up your layout in 3D. The easy way is you can take a picture of your house or find a picture off of Google Maps and you can adjust it on your house in your layout and I'll show you how to do that. If you also have a picture of the ground of your house so like from a drone straight up above your house, that'd be a really useful picture because you could put it on the ground so it looks more like your actual house. And then the harder way is you can make your own mesh or 3D object that you can move around so it looks like your actual house but you have to make all the angles right. And it was extremely complicated for me because I couldn't figure out how to use it. I won't really be explaining how I set up the mesh because I still don't understand how to use the program all the way. But thankfully, my house is very simple. It's basically a box with a triangle roof. So my house was easier to set up than most houses because most houses have a lot of corners and different parts of the house, so you have to make separate parts for the mesh. Now, should you use 3D? You do not have to use 3D if you want. 3D is an advanced way that makes everything look cool, and it is not necessary at all. You can still use 2D no matter what. So if you're wondering, last year's show and the 2020 show, they all the sequences were sequenced using 2D, even the Halloween ones, and this is actually the first year that I'm going to be using 3D layout, and I will tell you it is really cool. Now if you don't have that many lights and you have a simple layout, I recommend using 2D because you don't have to use all of the advanced stuff with 3D, it's easier to set up, it will save you a lot of time. Now if you're on the corner of a road or a street or you have a lot of props behind each other that you can't see if you're using 2D, then 3D would be a better option. But it's whatever you want to use. If you're willing to go through the extra steps to set up 3D, you can use 3D. But if you have a simple layout and you don't feel like using 3D, then you can use 2D. So to make the video simple, I'm going to be taking my 2020 light show layout and converting it into 3D because there's not a ton of pixels so it won't look too complicated. And then I'll show you how to add some other props. So let's hop onto my computer. Okay, so I'm in a temporary x lights folder, and I have some stuff set up in a 2D layout. So this will show you mainly how to convert from 2D. So in 2D, you can, like, hold your mouse. I'm clicking my mouse and holding it. You can use that to select certain props. That's what that does. I have a few props here, some windows outlines, some floodlights, a singing tree, and a snowflake. 
This isn't going to be my layout, obviously, because it looks bad. But these are just some props I have out. And then to move, you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And I could zoom, like, really far out. And I have a picture in the background. It's set to a brightness of 25, so it looks kind of like it's dark out. Another thing you could do is if you hold down your scroll wheel and move your mouse, you can move the picture left to right. So you can move like this and then zoom into a certain spot. Like if you wanted to see something on the tree or something on the house, that's how you could do that. But this is what it looks like in 2D. And like those arches, you can't see them that well because the fence is kind of blocking them. And you can't move around only sort of like this because it's X and Y. There is no Z coordinate. Whenever you're ready to switch it to 3D, there's a little box down here. And all you have to do is click that. And when you do, stuff will happen. So... Now you're in a 3D layout, and the way you move around is when you click with your mouse, that is how you move, like, the house in this direction. I'm not really sure what it's called. When you click down, regular left-click the mouse, this is how you move this way. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and then to zoom back out. And if you want to move side to side, it's like in 2D, you hold down the scroll wheel, and then that's how you move side to side. So this allows you to see it from any perspective but now your lights look kind of funny and if you look they're all together like you sh the um fence should be farther closer to me and then the arches should have a gap so that's why you need to adjust all of your things now now i'm going to show you how you move any of the props you want to in the order you want so i'm going to start with the fence so first stuff we want to do is just find the fence over here it's actually called single line i didn't name anything so when you click it, it shows three different arrows. The green arrow, if you click it and move, this will move it on the Y coordinate, up and down. If you hold the red arrow, that will move it on the um, X coordinate. And then if you move around here and use the blue arrow, that will move it on the Z coordinate. So that way you can make it like, if I had my house picture right here, these windows would need to be the farthest back, the arches in the middle, and then the fence right here. So then you can position it however you want. And if you click the little orange box, this will allow you to turn it in certain directions. So for example now, if I click the green box over here, it will rotate it like this. So you can rotate it in any order. If you hold the blue box, it will rotate it side to side. Let me get a better picture of it. Like that. And then this one, I'm not quite sure what it does. It kind of moves around funky but mainly the blue one and the green one. And then if you click the orange box again, it will bring you back to the arrows. Now, instead of moving the entire prop, if you wanted to move a certain part, you'd click one of the boxes on the side and then use the arrows to move that section up and down. I can make it closer so it's a um, smaller fence or I can make it a really big fence. And then if you had like kind of a sideways fence, you could use this arrow to move it like that. So it gives you a lot more movement to get everything in the precise location and that will make whole house effects look a lot better. And then if you click the green box, you can also do some stuff to rotate this one side. It's kind of funny how it works, but it will rotate it off of that section so you can rotate it on any part. So that's how you rotate it. So another prop, so all props will be different how you move them. So don't expect everything to be the same. But this one, you have, when you click it, you have your arrows, so you can move it forward or backwards or up or down. Then you can also move it left to right. But when you click it, you also get a new one with these boxes, and then when you click it again, you get the rotate part. So this is how you rotate it any way you want. But the other one, which are these boxes, these allow you to change the size of it. So I can make it wider and then bigger or I can make it super small that's what those boxes do they allow you to change the size of it and you can change the z coordinate but it doesn't do anything like it can't you can try and make it wider but you won't notice the difference there really is no reason to make it wider but most custom props like this face over here that will do the same thing as this and then uh, the doors and windows those will kind of work the same too when you click it it'll give you boxes to make it bigger so that's how you move around all of your props so it's not too complicated it can get a little hard to get used to all the controls but after a few days of doing it it will be super simple now i'm going to show you how to add a background image because you could try and set this up without a background image but it won't be too precise 
So you can come over here to 3D objects and this is where everything 3D will be found. Your grid lines will be under here, any meshes that you add will be here, and then your background image will be here. So if you select image, I can add an image and I have one of my house right here. It will be big, there it is, it is super big. Let me readjust that. If it's too hard to use the different boxes and arrows and stuff here, you can come into the size location and just type in the manual size you want. So I'm gonna make it, um, let's say this size. Whatever you do, make sure the X and Y is the same size because if you don't, then it will distort the image and stretch it or just make it look funny like that. Now, I'm not sure why, but my picture looks very funny. It's only this picture, though. I think it's the way I took it, but most pictures shouldn't look like this. I'm going to change the brightness to 25, so it's a little bit darker. Maybe I'll make it slightly brighter for right now. And I'm going to click the box to move it up and down however I want. So this is the simple way. You can add an image if you, if you want. This will make it easy to set up your layout. And you can crop it so only the entire house face, none of the yard will be in the picture and that's what I did and I'll show you that in a second and then if you could somehow get a drone picture or another view you can add your ground right here but I know a lot of people don't have drones and I have a drone but you can't really take a picture that well with it plus with power lines and stuff it makes it hard so this is a super simple way to add this and this is what you could do then you could uh, just zoom in adjust it however you want use the boxes use the tilt function just move it you can also use the size location but if you want to make it look even more realistic which i wanted to do you can give it of this image for a second so i'll give it of it and you can add an actual 3d object of your house and i have one already made and i'm gonna add it in so what you want to do to add it in is you hit add obj and then it's mesh i know what grid lines and image does but i'm not sure what the ruler or terrain does I think terrain is basically just a way to add an image on the ground and then you could add more grid lines so if you don't want the um, grid lines here or you do and then you want more up here too you can add more like that but I don't need that but I'm gonna add my mesh and once you click it it will show up a little box here there won't be anything yet and you have to select the obj file to be able to put a mesh in here it must be a dot obj file I have mine right here. I had to redo it 15 different times so I could get it perfectly the way I want. But once you select that, it will add the file, but it will be super tiny. So what you want to do is just use the scale buttons and just keep hitting them until you get to about the size that you want. There we go. And it's super bright right now. So I'm going to turn down the brightness to 33. And there you go. This adds a 3D object into your layout. So it looks really nice. And like I said, my house is super simple. It's um, a box with a triangle on top. And I couldn't get it to work. So you could see through the house roof right here. Because I don't know completely how to use this. If you look in the back, it might be hard to notice. But the back part of the roof is slightly a different color than the front part. And that's so I could tell where the exact peak is. So moving lights around would be a lot easier. Now I won't be explaining the entire way how I made this because it was very complicated. And it took me two days just to figure out this little tiny bit. But basically what I used was an app called Blender. I'll put a link in the description so you can download it and install it. It allows you to create 3D objects. And if I can find a good video that explains how to use it, I will also put that into the description. And then you could try and figure out how to make uh, house because like I said most houses won't be as simple as mine now once you get it on you can move it around and I don't like how big the grid lines are because I don't think they're big enough for me I'd like a little bit bigger so you could come into the scale size and make it slightly bigger I think what I did for my main layout was 1.05 that made it just big enough for it to fit everything I wanted it to and then you could click the mesh to move it around but you'll notice you can't see the arrows anywhere and that's because they're underneath and they're stuck inside the mesh so moving it is a little bit harder but you could also use the coordinates right here and just manually type them in and now if you want to add a picture onto here so it looks like the front of your actual house you can do that so basically what I did to add a picture of the front of my house is I took the picture that I used just a second ago and I cropped it so you could only see the entire house face and what you want to do is select image again and then just find your image this is the image right here so you can see that there's still a little bit of yard that you can see here but it's mostly the entire house face I'm gonna set the brightness to 33 
or I'll make it slightly brighter so I could see it for right now and then use the scaling again to give it the right position so I'm gonna type in 0 0.5 for the X and Y and I'm gonna bring it slightly forward a little bit and then just basically line it up with the house now this could be a little bit difficult you will have to move around to be able to see it and make sure it's flat against the house because right here it looks almost correct but if you move to here you can see it's not flat against the house so just make it almost completely flat and once it starts to disappear that's when you have to come back there we go now this isn't perfect because you can still see the house around here but you can adjust the size so it can fix it and if i was to use this as my permanent layout i would but this is just for a test and now once you have your entire house layout set up you will never need to change this like i said unless you move into a new house because uh, if you add more props all you have to do is add them each year you shouldn't have to change this so the first year of 3D will be hard because you will have to adjust all of this to make it look the right size and to get all the pictures on correctly. But once you're done with that, all you need to do every year is add the props. So I'm going to come over here to models. And like I showed you, everything moved over here. So I'm just going to click like this one window and I'll move it to put it on the right spot. Moving around items and getting them to their exact location is a little bit harder because you have the extra Z coordinate but it's not too complicated just move it around to get the right size and it's not big enough so i'll click the box and then stretch it like that and then i'll click the box again and one more time there you go and move it around perfectly and now it's the right size so it looks perfectly fine and now since i don't need to see the house as much i'm gonna make that even darker so you could just barely see it and now the complicated part is anything that's on your physical house is easy to set up but if you don't have a picture of your yard then it will be a lot harder because you don't know for example my arches go in the yard i don't know how far they'd have to go in the yard so for this if you don't have a picture you have to mostly just guess and then just make it look as natural as you can it doesn't have to be perfect the lights will still look perfectly fine if for some reason you didn't line everything up correctly but for example this looks about correct so if this is my house here this looks like where the arches should go and then imagine our fence is like somewhere right here so it's pretty good size now one thing i did want to talk about is using very dense props they look kind of funny in here so i'm going to make a matrix on our garage so this could be the projector there we go so that's about the right size now I have my projector running on this so this could be very dense and you could make this like 720p maybe even 1080p but even 720p that's a lot of pixels and 720p alone which is regular HD there is 921,000 pixels so to make your projector work that's like x trying to control 921,000 pixels so my projector I think the way I had it set is it's just under 240p because what I have for the numbers is I have 176 strings and then 96 strands. And even just that, that is still 16,000 pixels. So that is still x -Lights trying to control 16,000 pixels. So I won't go any more dense than that. But the main thing I wanted to show you is with very dense props, they can look kind of funny. So if you see how I'm moving around, there's like different lines and stuff in it. It looks very weird for some reason. But that's just how it works in 3D. Even with the singing face, you can see it with the singing face when you zoomed out. It kind of makes like some funny shapes. I don't really think it's a bug. I just think it's how x Lights is trying to show all of the pixels in it and it can't. So it just gives it funny designs. But just be aware of that, that dense props might look a little funny, but it's not a problem with you. It's just something to do with x Lights. Now, just to make this a little bit more realistic, I did organize most of the props. So all of the windows that I have and the floodlights, they're at the house mostly on the correct part. And I wanted to show you how to set a viewpoint. So you can move around, like I said, however you want. So you could view the house from anywhere you could, you want. You could view it. So my road is on a curve. So if I was to zoom out right here, the road kind of goes like this and then right in front of my house. So it has a curve right here. So I could zoom out and then like select it right here. So when I'm playing the lights, I could see what the lights look like if I was coming around the corner. Or if I was coming around down the road from this side of my house, I could move the house to right here. So I could see what the lights look like from there. I could also put it right in front of the house about where it would be 
this is where most people would be viewing it. I could see what it would look like if I was to have a bird's eye view of it. So let's say I was in a plane above my house. I could see what the house would look like from all the way up here, even though that's not really necessary. So you can have different viewpoints, but it's hard to get back to find the exact one you're at. So you can save them. So instead of having to try and move around to find it, you can uh, select save current viewpoint and a bunch of other stuff. So first you would want to set up your default viewpoint. This is the viewpoint where most of your viewers would be watching your show. And for me, that's right in front of my house. So try and line it up as best as you can. So I'd say about right here looks about to be the exact spot where anyone would be viewing my show. So what you want to do is hit um, uh, save current viewpoint as default. There you go. And then you can move around, do whatever you want. And then just hit restore default viewpoint. And there you go. You're right there. You can also save some other ones. So let's say I was coming around the corner at my house. I want to save it like right here to see what it looked like. I could hit save as current viewpoint. You don't want to hit save as current save current viewpoint as default because then this will be your default. But just save current viewpoint. So I'll call this coming around the corner. And there you go. Now I can move around any way I want. And if I right click now there's some new settings. Load viewpoint. There you go. Coming around the corner. It's set right there. You can also delete the viewpoint if you want to. I'm going to make one more. So if I'm coming this way from uh, on the road to look at the house, let's save this one. This would be going west. So I'll just say going west and then move around again and then load a viewpoint going west. There you go. So you can move it around and save any viewpoints as you want. And then when you're going to your sequencer, when you have all of your sequences here, your house preview you can move it around even in the house preview when you're looking at the lights and you can still use the load viewpoints. The only thing is you just can't save any when you're in here. You have to save them in the layout. So that is how you use 3D and X lights. It's not too complicated. The hardest part is just trying to make the mesh or your layout make it look like your house. But once it's set to your house every year when you add props, it should be very easy to add them. If you feel like I missed out something or you have any questions or you have any problems, Please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try and answer as soon as I can and help you. If you enjoyed the videos, it'd mean a lot if you could subscribe and leave a like. And if you want to get notifications every time I upload a new video so you don't miss them, you can click the bell, set it to all, and anytime I upload a video, you will get a notification. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.